Okay, so some old stuff, some new stuff, it's all starting to combine. So this chart is for you to help you organize the letters and what they mean because um, we're just kind of like way moving past it. So Gibbs free energy tells us whether something is spontaneous or not spontaneous. Spontaneous just means it's going to happen. K is greater than 1. It lies left. Look at all these products I made. Um, it doesn't mean rate. It could happen over billions of years. It could happen instantly. That's called kinetics. That's completely different. That's monkey and narwhal. This is just saying it will happen. If it ends up being positive, like the math, like the numbers, end up being positive, it's non-spontaneous. That means K is less than 1. Look at these reactants. Nothing happened. Okay? Non-spontaneous means nothing is happening and nothing ever will happen. Okay? It's related to the combination of enthalpy and entropy. It's just math, though. Like, plug in the numbers and see what happens. Enthalpy is heat energy. When it's positive, we call that endothermic. Heat is like a reactant. It's over here. It's on the left. If it's negative, we call that exothermic. Heat is like a product. It's over here on the right. Uh, it includes temperature because temperature is the only thing that can change K. I can shift things left and right based on temperature. Temperature really makes a difference. Ice melts at a certain temperature and is not going to melt at a certain temperature. Entropy is like you right now have very low entropy, right? You're not even moving. You're in rows. Freshmen have a lot of entropy. If it's a positive delta S, that means that I increase the entropy. The kids got to party, solid, liquid gas. If it's a negative and uh, delta S, the entropy is going down because they have to sit down, they have to put their seat belts on. It's going from a gas to a solid, okay? All of those things together make whether it's going to be spontaneous or not. They're all synonyms though. Spontaneous is the same thing as saying K is greater than 1. Negative delta G is the same thing as saying K is greater than 1. It's just another way to figure it out, okay? Uh, talk about that with your battle buddy, and then can you get out your notes? We're going to practice balancing a little bit. Ready, set, go. <laughs> okay. I only used red all day today. So, oh, but you're going to balance. If you still like to use colors of balance, and you might want to get them out. Um, but if you don't, you're fine. Um, it's been a full 24 hours of these. 12 steps. I lied to you about 13. I just made that number up all day. Um, but of those 12 steps, maybe you remember like four or five of them. Hopefully they kind of stuck with you, which means the other ones are lost. And that's totally, that's what learning is. So first thing I would like you to do is just go through the steps with your battle buddy. And then we're going to do number four and number seven. We didn't do those yesterday. But you can't start them until you talk about the steps because you have to remind yourself what they are. Then do four and seven. Ready? Go. Okay, so yesterday we talked about how 0 to 2 plus means it's losing two electrons. So here I have a solid thing at a state of 0. Here I have zinc 2 plus. Our eyeballs cannot see ions. But that means somewhere between here and here, two electrons were lost. So I did go get a pipe cleaner, and if you didn't know, on the inside of a pipe cleaner is a wire. And I had a hunch this would happen, but I didn't know. But overnight, those electrons, come on little guys, 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 jumped in this hot tub. This used to be blue. And copper ions, like the two plus kind of copper, is blue. But copper, the solid kind, is copper color. So I know some of this is because of the dye, but I lost all the blue color, which is an indication that, come on, little guys, come on, little guys, those two electrons found the two plus and started making solid copper. And so all of my copper ions disappeared and turned into, like, it's just dipping on the bottom, a little copper color. Okay? So today what we're going to actually do 
is learn how to draw a voltaic cell, which is this, but in a complete circuit, okay? So over here, I have my zinc inside my zinc solution. I actually did connect it with like a real wire, not like a pipe cleaner, through the lab course, which reads the voltage. So this is like, would be a battery. This chemistry is creating about point, it's starting to die a little bit, about 0.9 volts. Uh, it takes three volts to like light out LED light bulb. So not very much, but it is producing electricity, which just means the electrons are flowing through. Come on, little guys, and coming out the other side. Over here, I have it connected to my copper. So those electrons are grabbing the blue coppers and this piece of metal is actually getting fatter. It's gaining copper. The blue ions are turning into copper solid. So this is growing copper, this is getting skinnier because the metal is dissolving because the electrons are moving up. This is just a piece of yarn. It is called a salt bridge. It could be anything. I just picked yarn. You could use like a piece of towel or anything that can soak up iron. So I just took some salt and some distilled water and I soaked this yarn in it, like NaCO cup. And I soaked the yarn in it. All I need is to complete my circuit so it keeps going. If I take this salt bridge out, so we go down to zero, yeah, I lose the circuit so it can't keep flowing. So all this does is just keep the circuit going, and then my voltage keeps going. Okay, it's called the salt bridge. Um, sometimes it's a paste, like the word they like to use on paper is now the paste. It's just the same thing. It's literally, have you seen those potato cloths or lemon cloths? Like if you've ever seen at like Hobby Lobby, I think the potato is the salt bridge. It's just anything that has like water and ions in it that can make it flow. Okay, so uh, I think hamburger way, which is vertical, right, is the best way to do it. Let's draw that. Um, we're just drawing a chart on the bottom. So like a third, two thirds, like big enough that you don't feel like you have to write really loud. I have just a picture of that. This is a new. You can do it. Look at the beakers. All I did was draw them. When you're done sketching, can you get out your gold packet? You need Appendix EMU, which is the last page. That means we've learned everything in this packet. We are on the last page. And then I will take it away from you. Uh -huh. oh, you don't get it on the AP test. I said take it away. No. I'm going to take it away. I'll replace it with just a periodic table. Appendix email, appendix email. Is an email an ostrich? Are they the similar things or no? Yeah, aren't they big birds? Like an ostrich? What's the difference between an emu and an ostrich? Yeah, you just aren't going to be able to use that test. First, um, this is the most requested thing by people who graduate and take chem college. Like, hey, can I have that packet? So you might want to keep it if you care. I know. Fair enough. Then throw it away when you pass your AP class. She'll get one. What? Yeah, lots of it. Isn't like whole Um, it's the same as. 103, but if you get a 4 or 5 in it, you skip to 109, and that's really hard. 
don't give you uh, brain eyeballs. No, it's no brain eyeballs. Good luck, friends. Okay. <laughs> Did you like set aside your I have my YouTube channel. Okay, the first thing. Oh, I did that last over. Don't write it so close to your picture. We gotta write something right here. Skip a little bit. The first thing is we're gonna use Appendix Emu to determine what is being reduced. So if you look at Appendix E, the title is Standard Reduction Potentials. That means these are reduction numbers. The higher the number means that in the redox reaction, it's the reduced side. So it's the side that goes down. It's the side that goes to the from the plus charge back down to the zero. Okay, so we start here. In our example, we had on the left, I have zinc in a zinc two plus, and on the right, I have copper in a copper two plus. This is listed in alphabetical order, so they're pretty easy to find, but you do need to pay attention to like the charges because they have a bunch of different things on there. So looking for copper, but you're looking for the copper two plus and the two electrons. Because look at there's a copper two plus with a one electron. That's weird. So the copper two, help your bad buddy. Did you find it? Can you help find it? The two electron kind. So positive 0.337. And then let's find the zinc which alphabetical order, so like the very last one, X, Y, Z. Hey, alphabet. Good job. Thank you. Negative 0 0.763. We start there because this tells us where everything is going to go. So the higher one is being reduced. So this is what I do right away. I look for the higher one. I write reduce. The reduced happens at what's called the cathode. So just write it for now and I'll show you. So if this one is being reduced, the other one has to be oxidized. Oxidized happens at the anode. Honestly, the way I remember it is because they are both consonants, reduced cathode, and these ones are all oxidized anode. That's just how I remember. Okay? I tend to draw my anode on the left. So I'm going to label it. I just figured out, though, that my zinc is oxidized. I tend to draw my cathode on the right. That's because I feel like electrons like to go left to right. Because why would you go backwards? But sometimes it does. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is you are really going to have to probably use your brain on this. Okay, that's why we've been practicing oxidation numbers up and down. If copper is reduced, that means its number is going down. That means it starts at the 2 plus and it's going to end at the 0. The only way it can go from 2 plus down to 0, like the game we played yesterday, is gaining two electrons. Same game as the purple step. Starting at 2 plus, get it down to 0 is a plus 2 electron. Okay. Okay, now for the zinc, thinking a little bit. The oxidation number is going up. That means it's going from the zero up to the two plus. This is thinking. The only way it can go from zero up to the two plus is if it gives off two electrons, it loses two electrons. Okay. I do want you to talk about it because you have to make sure the electrons are on opposite sides because we're going to do the stuff where they cancel. But how did you are going to have to come up with that out of your brain, just knowing what the metals are. Um, and you're not going to have emu 
except for maybe they give you those numbers. So this is a brain thinky thing. Can you talk about how you know where they go? Ready, go. Okay, let's add those two together and we're going to create our net ionic equation. Our net ionic is the same thing for our like last step when we practiced yesterday where we added the two half reactions together. So all we did is we just wrote this equation and we just wrote that equation. Oh my god, why are you spinning? Okay, so you're going to have to just write. Our electrons would cancel, crisscross means gone forever. If they don't, then you have to do the multiplying stuff, okay? Sometimes you will and sometimes you won't. But if they don't cancel, you're going to have to do the multiplying stuff. I'm going to add them together so I have my 2 plus, and I just have my regular thing, and I have my regular proper, and I have my 2 plus thing. I'm skipping the oxygen stuff. I didn't have any. I get to skip the hydrogen stuff. I didn't have any. Okay. Let's start drawing in what's happening. So we know the anode is the zinc. And I know that because of emu. I know the cathode is the copper. And I know that because of emu. I got those numbers. The bigger one is the reduced side. The reduced side is the cathode because they're both constant. I know my reaction in my zinc is the solid is going to the 2 plus. So the solid is going to the 2 plus. It's dissolving. That means it's getting skinnier. The words losing mass is important because it, sometimes in like the words it'll say this one is losing mass and that's how you know it's the anode. It also means that I'm producing, this is what I'm using the wrong for, the two electrons. So it goes from zinc to two plus, so the two plus down, the electrons up. Come on, little guys, come on, little guys, come on, little guys, come on, little guys. We know our reaction at the cathode is this is going down. So the 2 plus is going down to the 0, arrow that way. And that's because these, this 2 plus is like, I could really use some 2 electrons. And it's making the 0. Okay, when the music starts, can you please talk to your battle buddy about the flow of the electrons? Where are they going? Where are they coming from? The salt bridge. You're going to label this salt bridge. Likely on the AP exam, you will be given a, like a blank picture and you just gotta like fill in all the stuff. Sometimes it's just a blank picture of the salt bridge and you have to fill in what's going on in the salt bridge. So the salt bridge just has any kind of ionic compound. I did sodium chloride just because it's cheap. What you need to write is there's the anions go toward the anode and the cations go toward the cathode. And all it does is complete the circuit so they can just keep flowing around and around and around and around and around. The anions toward the anode, the cations towards the cathode. And the words are to replenish lost ions. Those are the words. Okay, we're going to make a chart chart. Anode, lost ions, cathode, just these. The 
cathode is the reduction side. The anode is the oxidation side. Oxidation means the number is going up. So that means there is no element M. M stands for metal. So it's going from the zero metal to the plus metal and releasing an electron. So that's the only way it could get plus. Reduction means it's going down. That means it's going from the plus, gaining the electron back down to the zero. The anode is dissolving. It's getting smaller, loses mass. The cathode is getting fatter. I'm gaining copper on top of it. It's going from blue to the copper. So I put that and then find the sample problem. Ready? Go. <laughs> Find this sample problem. Step one, start at emu. Look them up. Find them on emu. The bigger one is the one being reduced. Reduced means it's the cathode. I write it all right away. I write numbers. I write reduced. I write cathode. I get organized from the very first thing I write it down. So I look up nickel. Nickel's a negative 0 0.28. I look up the copper, positive 0 0.337. The higher one is the reduced one because that list is reduction. So that means this is reduced. I get organized right away. I write reduced and I write cathode because I now know those two things and that's just going to help me. That means the other one, the nickel, is the anode. Oops, oxidized and the anode. This one gave us the balanced equations, which is kind of lucky duck. Otherwise, we would have to figure it out. Oxidized means the number is going up. So let's practice. It goes from zero up to two plus. The only way it can get to two plus is if it gives up two electrons. The copper is going down, it's being reduced. So that means it must be going from the two plus down to the zero. And the only way it can go down is by gaining the two electrons. Our electrons have to crisscross and cancel. If they don't, we might have to multiply. So my net ionic, my final answer for my equation looks like that. I didn't have to do any hydrogen balancing. I didn't have to do any oxygen balancing. To draw the picture, I like to put my anode on the left. You don't have to. I like to put my cathode on the right. You don't have to. And if it's given to you, it could be anyway. It might be backwards. My anode, I learned because I have it written down. I'm staying organized. It's my nickel and my nickel 2 plus. That's why I like to be organized. Now I don't really have to think. I'm just copying. And my cathode, I know, is my copper and my copper 2 plus. My equations are my nickel goes to my nickel 2 plus and releases two electrons. So my two electrons go up the wire. You need to draw a voltmeter. It's worth points. So they know that you know what I have to need. That there's a voltmeter in there. Yep. Oh, 
point. Everything on here is one point. My two electrons, this copper two plus is like, man, I really love those two electrons because I'm going to turn into copper. So once he turns into copper, he's getting fatter. And this one is dissolving, so that's getting skinnier. And one math equation for today. I can figure out the volts that are released by the whole thing by taking cathode minus anode. Cathode minus anode. So my cathode number, I was already really organized. I have it listed, 0.337 minus a negative, 0.28. I know that's adding, but it's cathode minus anode, even if it's minus a negative. Somebody push the button. Six one seven. Six one seven. Thank you. Oh yeah, seven. Okay. So by like given the two equations, you have to do all of those things. Yep, all of those things. There's not one thing that you can skip. Yes. Everything, all the things, everything that we wrote, the whole story. Okay. Um, can you get out your worksheet real fast? Can we get out your Yeah. Um, because you do all the like, things. No, like actually write it down. Yeah. All the things. Everything. Know it all. Do it all. Yeah. Oh, yes. Thank you for saying that. We did forget this. Anions to the anode, cations to the cathode to replenish lost ions. All of the things. Thank you, Alexa. Okay, now on your chapter 20 worksheet, number one and number two at the top. So the worksheet was a separate white packet that I gave you. Okay, number one and number two. See if you can do those with your battle buddy. Drawing them, looking them up on emu. I'll pull up the answers too.